When someone becomes suddenly ill, you may not know exactly what is wrong. By recognizing the signs and symptoms of sudden illness and acting quickly, you can help save a life. Sudden illnesses include seizures, diabetic emergencies, stroke, and poisoning and allergic reactions. Victims of sudden illness may show a wide range of signs and symptoms. A common sign of sudden illness is a change in consciousness, such as confusion, dizziness, or becoming unconscious. Here are your keys, Jack. Jack? Jack? Jack, are you all right? Size up the scene to be sure it is safe. Put on personal protective equipment. It's Annie. I, I know first aid. Can I help you? Yeah, I'm afraid. Okay. I need some help here! Okay, let me help you down. What's wrong, Annie? I don't know. Something's wrong with Jack. I'll call 911. Yes, thanks. Even if you cannot identify the specific sudden illness, follow these general care steps. Summon EMS personnel, perform an initial assessment, and care for any life-threatening conditions. If a person is conscious but they're really sick. Okay, can you tell me where you're... Oh, oh what happened? You got sick. Do you know where you are? Uh, yes. I'm, I'm in my office. Continue to monitor the victim's airway, breathing, and circulation. No. Watch for changes in consciousness. No. Are you taking any medications? No. EMS is on its way. Keep the victim from getting chilled or overheated. Here, keep him warm. Do not give anything to eat or drink unless Don't the worry. victim Help is fully conscious. Keep the victim comfortable and reassure the victim. To review, to care for a victim of sudden illness, follow the general procedures for injury or sudden illness on land. Then, care for any life-threatening conditions, monitor the victim's airway, breathing, and circulation. Watch for changes in consciousness. Keep the victim comfortable and reassure the victim. Keep the victim from getting chilled or overheated. Do not give anything to eat or drink unless the victim is fully conscious and not in shock. Care for any other problems that develop, such as vomiting. Administer emergency oxygen if available and you are trained to do so. Sudden illness can also occur in the water. You may not know what's wrong with the victim. Help! Once you recognize an emergency, for example, if a person has a seizure in the water, follow these steps. Summon EMS personnel. Since a victim of seizure may have inhaled or swallowed water, Support the victim's head above the water until the seizure ends. After the seizure ends, remove the victim from the water as soon as possible. Perform an initial assessment. Sir, are you okay? Monitor the victim's airway, breathing, and circulation. Care for any life-threatening conditions. During a seizure, the body may stiffen and then convulse. The victim may experience difficulty breathing. Do not hold or restrain the victim. Protect the victim's head by cushioning it. Remove any nearby objects that might cause injury. In a diabetic emergency, a victim may show signs such as dizziness, disorientation, or fainting, deep rapid breaths, or convulsions. Are you okay? Um, I'm, I'm a diabetic. My name's Catherine, I'm trained in first aid. Can I help you? Yes, I, I need my medicine. It, it's in my purse. Which pocket is it in? Um, the front one. Front one? Okay. Summon EMS personnel if appropriate. Keep the victim comfortable and care for the conditions you find. I think I'll be okay. A person having a stroke may suddenly have weakness or numbness of the face, arm, or leg. Usually this weakness or numbness occurs only on one side of the body.
Are you all right? In addition, the victim may have difficulty talking or being understood when speaking, have blurred or dimmed vision, experience a sudden severe headache, dizziness, or confusion. You don't feel too good? To care for a victim who is having a stroke, just remember, fast, face, arm, speech, and time. All right, sir, I think you may need help, okay? Is it all right if I help you? Okay, I'm gonna ask you to do a few things for me. Can you do that? Ask the person to smile. This will show if there's drooping or weakness in the muscles on one side of the face. Okay, can you smile for me, please? All right, good job, okay. Ask the person to raise both arms to find out if there's weakness in the limbs. See my hands, see how they're raised? Can you raise your hands up for me like that, please? And ask the person to speak a simple sentence to listen for slurred or distorted speech. All right, I'm gonna ask you to say something for me, all right? Can you do that? Okay, can you say, it's a beautiful day? If the person has trouble with any of these tasks or shows any other signals of a stroke, note the time that the signals began and summon EMS personnel immediately. Hey, John? Can you call 911 for me? All right, so we're gonna get you some help, okay? Describe the signals to the dispatcher. You can sit him down here. I know first aid, can I help? Yes, please. A person who has been poisoned or has an allergic reaction may show these signs and symptoms. Confusion, dizziness or disorientation, difficulty breathing, coughing, abnormal pulse rate, sweating, vomiting, or nausea. All right, we're gonna need to wash this out. Come with me. If the person tells you they are allergic, or if they begin to show signs and symptoms of poisoning or an allergic reaction, summon EMS personnel. Other times you should summon EMS include, if the victim is unconscious, is unusually confused, dizzy, or seems to be losing consciousness, has difficulty breathing or is breathing in a strange way, has persistent chest pain or discomfort, has persistent abdominal pressure or pain that will not go away, is vomiting blood, has seizures, severe headaches, or slurred speech, or appears to have been poisoned. To review. To care for a victim of sudden illness, follow the general procedures for injury or sudden illness on land and summon EMS personnel. Perform an initial assessment and care for life-threatening conditions. Continue to monitor the victim's airway, breathing, and circulation. Watch for changes in consciousness. Keep the victim comfortable and reassure the victim. Keep the victim from getting chilled or overheated. Do not give anything to eat or drink unless the victim is fully conscious. A wound is an injury to the body's soft tissue, the skin, fat, and muscles. Put your hand on it and press firmly. Bleeding occurs when blood vessels or arteries are broken. Internal bleeding occurs inside the body. It may be as simple as a bruise or as serious as a ruptured artery, which cannot be seen. A bruise is caused by damage to blood vessels in the soft tissue, which results in bleeding under the skin. External bleeding occurs when there is a break in the surface of the skin. Different types of injuries that may involve external bleeding include an abrasion, which is skin that has been rubbed or scraped away, a laceration, which may have either jagged or smooth edges. Deep cuts can damage nerves, large blood vessels, and other soft tissue. A puncture, which is a wound caused when an object, such as a nail, pierces the skin or an avulsion, which is a cut in which a portion of skin or even a body part is partially or completely torn away. I want you to apply some pressure to that. Minor bleeding is easily stopped with light pressure. Put myself on a locker. Okay. Go ahead. Press firmly. EMP, come in. 
We have an employee at pull four with a laceration to the right forearm. Can you come provide assistance? Severe bleeding is a life-threatening condition. Be sure to summon EMS personnel immediately. When caring for any kind of bleeding, put on personal protective equipment. To care for a bleeding wound, first cover the wound with a dressing, such as a sterile gauze pad. Apply direct pressure by pressing firmly against the wound. Cover the dressing with a roller bandage. Use overlapping turns to completely cover the dressing. Secure the bandage by tying a knot directly over the wound. If the bleeding does not stop, apply additional dressings and bandages. Take steps to minimize shock. Any serious illness or injury can cause the condition known as shock. Shock is the body's natural attempt to keep blood-containing oxygen flowing to the most important organs of the body, such as the brain, heart, and lungs. Signs and symptoms of shock include restlessness or irritability, altered level of consciousness, pale or ashen, cool, moist skin, nausea and vomiting, rapid breathing or a rapid pulse, and excessive thirst. To minimize the effects of shock, make sure EMS personnel have been called. Continue to monitor the victim's airway, breathing, and circulation. Control any external bleeding. Keep the victim from getting chilled or overheated. Elevate the legs about 12 inches if you do not suspect a fracture or a head, neck, or back injury. Comfort and reassure the victim until EMS personnel arrive and take over. To review. When caring for a wound that is bleeding, put on personal protective equipment. Cover the wound with a sterile dressing. Apply direct pressure against the wound. Cover the dressing with a roller bandage and tie directly over the wound. If the bleeding does not stop, apply additional dressings and bandages. If necessary, take steps to minimize the effects of shock until EMS personnel arrive and take over. There are several different types of burns. Radiation burns are caused by too much exposure to the sun. Chemical burns occur when certain chemicals come into contact with the skin. Electrical burns result when electrical current, such as from a power line, comes into contact with the body. Thermal burns are caused by contact with extreme heat. They result in damage to the skin and underlying tissue. The severity of a burn depends on the temperature or strength of the source of the burn, the length of exposure, the location of the burn, the area and size of the burn, and the victim's age and medical condition. The severity of a burn depends on how many layers of soft tissue have been burned. A superficial burn, also called a first-degree burn, 